Hi there. Live long and prosper. This is Geeks Assembled. And we have uh, again endeavored to present uh, Sir Patrick Stewart as Jean Luc Picard in his new TV series, Star Trek Picard. Um, and it's, it, it has, uh, the first season has ended and it was 10 episodes long. And our <coughs> very own Beef Dad has uh, watched the, the lot and is joining us for the first time for a Picard uh, podcast and and so welcome and and please give me op give me your opening thoughts and you can tell me whether or not you want to do this like episode by episode or if you'd like to uh, review the whole thing so it's up to you um you know it was weeks ago that I watched most of it okay and yeah, I quite enjoyed it. Um, there's some, um, a couple, Ruffy's very good. Um, the, um, Harry Treadaway playing Narek is excellent at really getting on your nerves. Um, it's all very long and some of it moves very, very slowly. Um, Patrick Stewart has aged incredibly. Um, wonderful seeing Brent Spiner as Commander Data, <clears throat> but looking very old. Um, yeah, I wouldn't want to do it episode by episode. I, I, okay. I thought we were going to do episode 10, parts one and two. Right. And <clears throat> yeah, that's um, more in my head than the All rest right. of them are. So, so uh regarding that what would what would you what were your opening thoughts on the last two episodes uh, of the, the series two, last two episodes were really very very good i thought um i don't like the romulans i found myself really hating them uh uh, of course, you had the cube with the, when the Romulans were basically in charge of the cube, and yet that eventually gets taken over by um, Seven of Nine. And it was brilliant seeing her in this. And, uh, yeah, the, um, there's some wonderful special effects. I, I love the, um, anti-Romulan, well, the, the anti-space ship, um, defense of the planet. The orchids. I mean, that that was just extraordinary. And it looked beautiful. Um, yeah, and of course you had bits with Patrick Stewart in his dreams with um, with Data. And that was wonderful. And he also he also played an old guy who looked like Data with white hair. Um, he, uh, Brent Spiner is an excellent actor. I love him. I always have loved 
um, data. Um, <clears throat> yeah, the, yeah, the girl, Alison Bill, who plays Agnes, I thought was very, very good. I loved her performances. It was all very, very held together. And Issa Briones that played Darjasa, she also played her sister Soji, which were, both of them were um, daughters, should we say, of Data, um, because they've been able to use some of his neurons to form the two girls. Um, Michelle Heard playing Rafi, she really was very, very, very good. Really was very, very good. And um, what's his name? Evan Angor, Evan Eva Eva Gora. Um, as his, basically his personal guard was just superb, and especially the act, the act, the action when he was fighting with his sword was just superb. It was brilliantly done. Um, I was very sad at the end. Very sad at the end. Um, you know, with what happens to Patrick Stewart. And that got me very, very emotional. But you expect that with Patrick Stewart because he's just such an incredibly brilliant actor. And so he takes he takes your emotions and really pushes them. That's it. Thank you very much, Beef Dad. Um, let's move over to uh, across the pond to S Susan okay. and uh, sitting there with her cool um, communicator pin. Yes, um, it was not exactly Federation issue. It broke. Thank you much, Federation into via et issue via Etsy. <laughs> I've only had it for a month and already the back fell off of it. So I'm trying to stick it in my sweater to make it stay. Okay. Anyway, uh, first of all, my apologies to, pa apologies to Patrick Stewart. I had planned this review to be all upbeat and yay and had my pen all ready, but I look like shit and I'm stressed out and I'm all coronavirus stressed out and those are my days in quarantine and <laughs> everything is not good in my world right now. So I'm not really, I mean, I love this show. I've been talking, I haven't stopped talking about this show since it started. Susan, and why don't you just show, show us the pen and then you can set it down. Hey. There you go. Thanks. <laughs> and then All you right. can set it down so it doesn't hurt you. This is annoying me. Anyway. Fine. The card rocked. My apologies for Patrick Stewart. I don't know how coherent this is going to be. But this series really served the public because it gave them something hopeful to look on to. They gave them a look at a federation that wasn't all always doing the right thing. And yet, through all of the gist of it, at the very end, they finally got their act together and did do the right thing. So that gives us pseudo hope <laughs> for where we are right now, that eventually the powers that be will come together and do the right things, provided we don't all die first. Um, but you know, that's sci-fi for you. It's based in reality, things happen. Um, but these two last two episodes, oh my God, they come through the, the, the tunnel, the Borg tunnel in to go get to Synthville planet and they're attacked by a lone Romulan fighter and to the rescue comes this huge Borg cube which is mind-blowing 
and it, it takes, it's only a few seconds on the screen. And then these huge orchids come up and eat the cube and bring them all down to the surface. And it's just a most incredible beginning. Uh, really, really cool. Um, it turns out that Soji's got a sort of a cousin, cousin uh, um, that kind of reminds me of Lore, to be honest, an evil, evil android type thing that's decided that uh, they're not going to give the human race a benefit of the doubt. They're going to summon the aliens um, to destroy the organics and save them. And it takes the it takes two hours of this series for Picard to finally show them in in an act of humility and uh, total selflessness to give his life for theirs so that they understand what life is about because he has a brilliant speech where he talks about how they are children they may be um, engineered to be years and years ahead of us on the development scale but they are still children and they haven't been taught properly and they need to be taught by example so he teaches them by example what life is about life is about us helping each other to survive and sometimes that means some of us don't survive but we help each other to survive and that is the message that we need to take today i wish the freaking white house would watch picard <laughs> i wish they'd watch our podcasts I wish the freaking White House would watch Picard, you know, learn how to have some sort of an ethical conscience and just, you know, take care of business because that's what it's all about. The Federation in this movie, they, you know, they succumbed to their baser instincts. They succumbed to fear. They allowed an outside force to totally undermine their politics and their way of life and their ethical code. But in the end, due to a lot of really hard undercover work by a small amount of people, it was brought into the open. And when they realized what had happened, they righted it and they fixed it. And because of that, humanity survived. Please watch the card, White House. <laughs> so, because these are the kind of leaders that we need. We need leaders who are going to make the sacrifices, the self-sacrifices, not business sacrifices or business saving decisions, self sacrifices to save the rest of the human race, because it is no exaggeration to say that is exactly where we are right now. So I am, we are living in sci-fi. We could watch the newscast and think we're watching Torchwood or something, but we're not, we're living in reality. And I am very grateful to uh, Sir Patrick Stewart for um, bringing this to life, for allowing the writers to talk him into bringing this to life. The writers are genius. The costumers are genius. Every, there's so much of good detail, detail. I have been drinking because I've been really stressed out. So I'm sorry, Mr. Stewart, Sir, Sir Stewart, um, if you watch this. I'm really stressed out. Could you give me a pin that works? I would really like a real pin. <laughs> if you see this, Mr. Patrick Stewart, Sir Patrick Stewart, I love you. I have been watching you since you were um, a, a guard in I, Claudius. <laughs> so, <laughs> please send me a pin. Anyway, and I mean, if there, if, as if there was anything else that this man could do to make me love him. He rescues pit bulls, he stands up for women who are abused, and now he goes back to make Picard at a time when we need it most. So the episode was really fabulous. The whole end of it, they wrapped up the whole data. Data got a proper ending. Um, it was breathtakingly beautiful. So that's my drunken Picard tirade. <laughs> nice. Well, I'm glad you got to do it here. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And so we're going to go back across the, the ocean, the Atlantic Ocean, to a, a small place called Hull. Go for it, Lee. Yeah. And, um... Yeah, admittedly, the, the series as a whole had its ups and its downs. Uh, you know, there was highs, there was lows. It dragged to here and there. But the final, the finale, the two-part finale delivered. It really did deliver. Um, and it's been mentioned, you know, from the opening scenes with those giant orchids just coming up there into the... I, I, I just watched it and I thought, 
what the hell is going on? I, I, I thought, I just, am, I, am I on drugs or something? What's going on here? Uh, it, was tacky, it was like tacky 60s Star Trek, and it worked. It? But it, it, it did, it worked, and it was so wonderfully done. Um, yeah, I just loved that. That's that was what, that's one of my favourite scenes. So, when, yeah. but um, yeah, and as I say, it, it paid it paid off at the end. Um, the acting and the team, the, the Picard team, because this is a team that it's a crew now, isn't it? Because um, they're off there now at the end of this, going that way, and, you know, second star on the right, carry on till morning, sort of thing. Um, yeah, what can you say? It was. It, you know, it gave you a story and it, it, it sort of tied a knot in it at the end and that was it. Um, yeah, Brent Spann is brilliant as Data. Now, what, what, he was he was playing the son. Was it the son of... The, the great son of, grandson of, 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 of Jungian son. That's right, the guy, yeah. who, the guy who made... Create, Data, uh, yeah. Or the, the, the other one who was in doing those other things in that other show mm -hmm. uh, i mean he that that family has been uh doing stuff skirting the sides of star of starfleet mm. and yeah, um, go for it. you just you just go for it yeah i mean that was a brilliant character um i mean you didn't know well to begin with you thought he was a good guy then oh he's a bad guy and all of a sudden turned around again uh, which was quite brilliant um oh there is a question what happened to the character the romulan character um played by harry treadwell i've been wondering that i don't know at the end of the movie all the romulans mm -hmm. go home they're on the ship yeah, taking yeah. off on adventures and we don't know what happened to the romulan agent that was on the planet he wasn't yeah, he, killed. He, he just disappeared he was not to be seen in the family wasn't, it wasn't told to us what happened to him maybe maybe season two we don't know i'll uh, turn up in season two god willing there's a season two yeah for me though it's, it's, it, it, it was brilliantly shot um i called it i did call it well i sort of called it at the beginning of the season okay um, wait a minute wait a minute before lee says this so everyone watching this will believe this we <laughs> said in a prior cast the opening had this leaf that went into Picard's head, and Lee said, what if Picard is a synth? Now, Picard wasn't a synth for the story, but at the end of the story, he does turn into a synth. So Lee did call it, sort of. So yeah. there you go. <laughs> Lee nailed it. It was, it was. Nailed it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I used to I pay attention to the opening credits. He eventually, he was a synth. Yeah. Um, yeah, that, that. I agree with Beef Dad, and you know, it, Patrick Stewart, you know, the, Picard's death um, was was really well done. Um, and then everything was, but you know, nobody ever dies in science fiction, really. Um, and as you said, it said Data had a really good send off. Now, then, when that happened as well. Um, but yeah, I enjoyed it. It's. Um, it was it was an ideal finale for that this season. It really did. I wasn't disappointed to to be fair. Sometimes you get to an end of a series and you think, is that it? Yeah. This you get to the end of this one, you think, I can't wait for the next series. <laughs> but, and I can't wait for the next series. But if something were to happen in another series two isn't shot, I know it's supposed to be, but if it wasn't for whatever reason, I would be okay with this because this was such a wonderful ending that mm -hmm. I, I could live with that. Um, but I don't yeah, know. Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay, Brent Spiner, I found it. He played Dr. Arik Sung in, uh, in Star Trek Enterprise, which is set 150, so maybe 200 years before this. Right. Okay, anyway, over, back over to you, Susan. That's my bit for now. All right. Well, um, I didn't mean to interrupt, but I'm I'm always interrupting. Uh, so anyway, I'm just really glad that we watched this. And um, Alex, what what was your take on the last two episodes of Picard? Uh, I don't know. I mean, some things I really liked, and other things I didn't. Um, I liked the spaceship. 
Um, there was only a couple of characters that I actually liked. I, I do like the card. Um, I like the fact that the Federation isn't so sweet, and they're not treating him very well either. Um, the what was it? The was he a hologram or robot or whatever? The, what, what was he? The pilot with the beard or whatever his name was. Um, he was a human, but he had lots of AIs. On copies, the yeah. That was kind of interesting. I don't know who the who was the the young woman with the blonde hair, and then I don't know if she committed Dr. suicide or was poisoned. Dr. Girardi. Yeah, I was kind of like, what's going on here? Uh, Data. Uh, I mean, I, I never really liked Data, even though I like Spock. I never really liked Data. What did you? Think I did like. The, um, go the, on. The, the scientist who who was played by Brent Spiner. Yeah, that was all right. Um, I. Yeah, I mean, some things I really liked, other things I didn't. I just kind of wish that the, I don't know, it, it, some episodes were really slow and some episodes are really confusing. And then I understand that they did that on purpose a little bit to, to but that's fine. I understand. They, they want to, you know, they want to play the long game and they had to. I like the fact that uh, Riker came back. I actually liked that. I was like, hey, can we have Riker take over the show? Thanks. Uh, I actually did like him. I was like, "Hey, c could you could you do a tough guy thing? Like, do you feel lucky, punk? Could you could you do that for me?" Uh, <laughs> I did like uh, Troy. Did Troy come back? Yeah, Counselor Troy. No, no, it was just she didn't right come back. That ship. Uh, she didn't come back. Did she come back? Not on this episode. On a no, but I'm episode. saying in the in the series she did, right? Yes, in the series several episodes ago. But uh, uh, what was his name? Lafor uh, LaForge didn't, right? Uh, no. Burton. See, yeah. I wanted him to come back too. So yeah. even though I don't watch, yeah, even though I don't watch the show regularly, uh, there was a few characters that I liked. I didn't really like Data. I was kind of like, all right, enough with the Data. Ugh. Um, but I liked Counselor Troy, and I liked Riker, and I liked um, uh, what, LaForge, you know, the, the guy with the yeah. visor. Um, I, I always did like him. Yeah, but they wanted him in. Yeah, I know, I know, so, but so I, so I wanted him in it. Next generation. Nine at the end. Seven or nine? Yeah, she's all right. She's Thank all right. You. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. She's all right. Um, so I also thought it was interesting, not only, um, I don't know if that, uh, the, the doctor again committing suicide or something. Um, but I, yeah, I'm not sure. Um, she lived. Oh, she did. Well, how? But wasn't there that scene that the at the yeah. beginning and the end where she had all the? I don't know if she took a cyanide pill or was poisoned or something. Yeah, she was trying, was she was trying to get the um, location device out of her system. Oh, okay. Um, so yeah, so I, I did like it, and I know Patrick Stewart is a great actor. I know he's got a great voice and all that. Um, of course, I do like him singing Rawhide and Buttons and Bows, um, <laughs> the little fake infomercial. Uh, and I do like him on Family Guy, even uh, not Family Guy, American Dad, uh, even though I didn't like where they took his character in that show. Um, so yeah, the, the ending was interesting. It just, it was a little slower. I probably would have done it differently, but hey, I'm I'm not a big fan necessarily. So, do, do, don't you remember the big? Yeah, there was a, the, all those Romulan ships. And yeah, mm -hmm. right. yeah. No, like I said, I mean, uh, I like it better than uh, Discovery. Uh, but uh, yeah. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so, um, I'm gonna go into. Like my opening thoughts will also include my my favorite moments. My favorite moment was the space battle. Um, th they'd run out of orchids, and there was a spit, and then all these ships show ships showed up, and it was like, um, and it was like instantly populating the whole uh, you know, planetary <laughs> system of this of of these synths, and it was just amazing. And um, that 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 really was quite epic. And then the other thing that that I really loved about this was um, was the fact that the that the synths uh, were trying to reach those other alien, other dimensional synths uh, somewhere else. And so 
you know, that just, that is always ugly when you're trying to gain ultimate power, you know, ultimate power, unlimited rice pudding. It's just, it's, it always goes badly. So, um, yeah. Uh, pretty much love, uh, I love the fact that, 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 that Picard actually survived, but, um, I just think it's really funny that, that all of my favorite characters are being turned into either Cybermen or, um, or synths. It's just the way of the world right now. Like we are not going to survive this without, without, without an upgrade. So I just, that, that's, that's my, that's, that's, in in so, in so many ways, that's my that is my favorite moments and opening thoughts for the last two. And so, yeah, w- let's go to Susan. What's your what's your favorite moments? Okay, now that I'm a little more coherent, not that it'll ever happen, but the whole entire series was centered around and was about the resolution of Data's death and how it affected the card. That was the gist of the whole thing. And it started brilliantly with the song, uh, Blue Skies in the beginning. It ended brilliantly with Data's natural death, which if you follow Data on Next Generation, he always wanted a natural death. At the end, listening to Blue Skies after he had a cognac, which I thought was brilliant. And I was personally distressed that he was alone in this net, in this artificial reality for 20 years. I don't understand why they didn't put Data's consciousness into one of those golems. Maybe they didn't have the technology. I don't know, but that really disturbed me. Uh, But the whole thing was about that relationship and about that resolution of friendship. That was the, the crux of it. It was, the series was all about Data and Picard's dealing with his death. And everything else that happened was sort of just beyond, just below it. And it helped him to justify that, helped him to resolve that death in his brain. The odd, even to the point of Picard way back in Next Generation was the one who argued to the Federation that Data was a sentient being and deserved all of the rights there too and made that landmark decision, it, that, that case had the judge make that landmark decision in Federation law, stating that Data was a life form. Well, here we have at the end of the series, Picard's dying and Data's daughter, who Picard, huh, my dog's kind of barking. Hold on a second. I'm sorry, ladies, come here. Okay, um, let's beat him up over to- No, Jeff. no, no, wait a minute, I'm not done. I just oh, want to get my dog. Okay. My dog. So, so the whole point of it is, at the end of all of this, Picard's helped Data's daughters and the people who have, who have become offspring from Data to live, gotten them status in the Federation, which is what he did for Data to begin with. And not only that, he becomes one of them, which is a life circle journey. And that is the whole through piece of the story. Everything else is great and it's great side stories, but everything surrounds that plot. And it was just brilliant. And Seven and I was brilliant. The Borgs were brilliant. Everything was brilliant. Brilliant. Well, um, sorry you didn't really enjoy it. I that really much. hated it. I hated every minute. I, I know, I know, it pretty much sucked, didn't it? Uh, so let's let, let let us be bop over to Beef Dad as we were <laughs> going to in a, a few seconds ago. Here we go. Um, yeah, there was several really good bits that sort of jumped out at me. Um, right with uh, Jonathan Frakes, who played with oh, yeah. uh, suddenly ar- suddenly being there. That that really got me and yep. I brought, a smile, that one. brought a smile to my face and I thought to myself, my God, he looks older than me. Um, <laughs> seven of nine um, 
Jerry Ryan has always been brilliant, the seven of nine. Uh, but she was so good in this. Um, in fact, I thought at one point where she was where she connected herself to the to the hub of the um, Borg cube, um, which was pretty um, pretty extraordinary the way they did that. Uh, to be perfectly honest, at that point, I thought that she might end up becoming queen of the Borg. Yeah. But, uh, it didn't happen, and she was just. But she was so good. She was just so, so good, and it was so well written for her. Um, and there was one point where she and um, I can't remember who it was. Uh, she and one of the other women started playing. Uh, they were sitting there playing a game from way back and that was good and yeah as I say the Romulans were really hateful the way it was written they wrote it brilliantly to make them really hateful um, well, this was the Tal Shiar. It wasn't all Romulans. Sorry? This was the Tal Shiar. It was a sect of Romulans. It wasn't all yeah. Romulans. Yeah, but the Tal Shiar. Um, or the Jat Vash, which was inside the Tal Shiar. Anyway, yeah. it just wasn't all Romulans. Yeah, thank you. Um, but that was, that was good. They were really anti and, you know, you really felt at the enmity towards them, um, which is pretty good actually. And uh, yeah, the girl who played Sergi and Sutra, she was very, very good playing both parts. I mean, I remember when the first girl got killed, that was extraordinary. That was absolutely amazingly well done as far as special effects was concerned. And yeah, she said the death of Jean-Luc and the fact that they brought him back as AI was just superb. Because mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yeah I, I must confess with, um, with Data dying, and then Picard dying. I found it very, very emotional. I was almost, I almost had tears in my eyes. And then bringing him back as AI really is going to give them an awful lot of um, opportunity in a series two. And uh, yeah, excellent. That's it. All right, and Lee, your favorite? Well, yeah, um, I've, we've mentioned the orchids. I just loved that scene. Um, I liked the the bitch fight between Seven and Anne and the, rom the, the woman. <laughs> that was amazing. And that, that woman playing the villain, she too was awesome. Yeah, yeah. Uh, she, she got a comeuppance right over the edge. <laughs> but um, I liked the little scene at the end where the, the, the synth Picard at the end was hoping that he'd be superhuman, um, have a hundred years life expectancy. We've, get, yeah, we've tweaked it. You can maybe have 10 or 20 years in yet. Oh, he, he didn't want that. They said he made him, he said, you didn't make me immortal. And yeah. said, oh, you'll have normal life. He said, we could have had another 10. 10, 20, 20 that years, was, yeah. That was, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, well, for me, yeah, the, the scene where Data, he 
he's fading away and you've got a Picard there as well and he yeah. sort of fades away. That was so well done. Brilliant. Let's just say it like Big Dad, oh, there was a little tear in my eye there. You felt it. Um, it was just, the whole series, and they say the, fin- the finale was just amazing. The crew, Picard's crew, are just fantastic. And yeah. it looked like they're just going to be travelling the the galaxy now because, you know, Picard's a free agent at the moment, isn't he? Now he's uh, <laughs> officially dead. <laughs> yeah, I think that I think that it will be sort of like uh, Blake yeah, Seven, <laughs> like Blake Seven, like the Federation fight, trying to find them and trying oh, to help. I'm, I'm sorry, I think ripping off another British TV show. What is oh my it? God, he's going to come on and start talking about Blake Seven. Oh, nope. <laughs> no, but, but but it'll be what was the the um the Rangers that Seven of Nine was part of. Oh, the Fen Fenric, not Fenric, but who Doctor Who? I, I I don't I don't remember the There's name, but yeah. Kind of an app and there was a name of the Rangers, and that's the part. I have a sneaking suspicion they may go off and just kind of do the same thing and join the Rangers and helping people throughout the quadrant. Mm-hmm. You know, that might be that might be it, but we don't know for sure. Yeah. And we don't know, you know, when this is ever going to be filmed. It was supposed to be filming now, but it's not. Yeah. Please, Patrick Stewart, stay in a box, stay in a plastic bubble. Do not get sick. Do not leave us. <laughs> yeah, but we we do know when they do when they do start filming. Um, you've got Whoopi Goldberg; she's returning. Oh, yeah. I heard hopefully, that. That's gonna be awesome. Hopefully, Jordy and Worf will make an appearance in the next series. So. Yeah, you've got to, you've got to give them, a, and maybe Beverly Crusher as well. I know. She, I'm surprised. No, uh, no Shadow Plowsley, huh? No, no, we don't. No. <laughs> I also would like to see Janeway make an appearance at some point. Actually, wasn't, I think I read something about that. Yeah, that. but I don't know if that was anything yeah, um, true or not. Yeah. I can't tell. I couldn't tell if it was real or if it was an April Fool's joke. Yeah. Um, of course, there, there's also rumor that Life on Mars is coming back, so. Those are good rumors. Um, yeah. They may very well be true. Yeah. All right. Well, what's that now, Lee? What'd you say? That's nothing to do with Picard, though. No. Um. So, okay. What's your, what's your final say and score for the last um, two episodes? Yeah. And, I mean, I and the whole series. Well, like I said, I I already said what I didn't like, but I mean, I like the cast. I like the fact that they didn't show the Federation, you know, being so sweet like they used to. Um. I guess it's good because technically I really wasn't a Next Generation fan. Um, my stepfather is more of a Star Trek fan, so I should be—I should have asked him whether he saw Discovery or Picard. I wonder what his ideas on it would be. Um, because I know he saw The Next Generation. I think he saw like five seasons of it or four seasons of it when it first started in, what, 87 it came out? Um but yeah, it, it is kind of funny. I said to myself, hmm. So, and I, I had a feeling too, he might turn into a, a robot type of thing. Um, but like I said, I like Patrick Stewart. Um, I like some of the actors. It's just, it's not, it's not a universe that I necessarily like, but like I said, it is better than Discovery. Uh, that, that annoys me a lot. Uh, even though I like some of the actors in that as well. But I usually like British science fiction, so I don't know if this qualifies. Okay, so what are you going to uh, give it? Uh, for the cast, I'm going to give it a nine. For the series, uh, I'm going to give it a seven. 7.7, 7, I guess. Seven point it's a seven. shame because I, I really do like the actors. That, so really, a, you gave it a seven or nine? Yeah, uh-huh, I'm very funny. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, let's let's go to Beef Dad. What's your final say and score? Well, yeah, as I say, uh, the beginning of the series um, was slow, and uh, I found lots of it lots of it rather boring. Um, and uh, I would say. Series-wise, I would probably give it eight. Um, but the final episode for me would get um, a nine point five. 
Excellent. And Lee, what's your final say and score? Well, for the two pack finale, do you know I, what? What's the title of the, the two? Because I can't pronounce it. <laughs> in, in Arcadia, ego or it's not ego. ego. Ego, yeah, something like that. <laughs> Why didn't just call it something normal? Um, it delivered. Uh, it was enjoyable. It, uh, I was on the edge of my seat all the way through it. Um, it, it tugged on your heartstrings as well, and it set up hope for a new series and brand new stuff for whenever it happens. So for me, it's a ten. Right. Okay. Sweet and Susan. Well, I hated every moment of it. That's obvious. But the the last two series, the last two shows, I think I'd say nine point five for the first part. There were parts of it that I just didn't like. The only thing within this whole series that I didn't like, there were times that there was excessive volume violence, uh, and I thought, and I kept thinking, this is not HBO. And it, it, every time you saw a secondary character from one of the past Trek shows, whether it was Voyager or um, Next Generation, they ended up dying horrible deaths. So, <laughs> so if you're a secondary character from one of the other Star Trek shows, you're wearing a red shirt. <laughs> and that's pretty much, you know, <laughs> the way that this, this series operates. So please, wh whoever, if anybody watches this besides Cher, um, <laughs> just, just, it's a running joke. Please stop with the excessive violence. We didn't need to see the guy getting his organs ripped out. It was not. It was not necessary. Uh, it was. It was superfluous and just horrible. Even the first scene of violence was too much. Um, that all of that said, when Riker showed up with the Star Trek, and it was Riker, and I knew it was going to be Riker. Um, it. It was. It was brilliant. I wish there would have been a little more Borg, there would have been a little more of those battle scenes, a little more of the big part of Star Trek in it. Could a little, did a little more with the Borg cube. It was there for a few seconds and a crash and that was it. So expand those parts a little more for the next one. Um, but honestly, this whole freaking thing was a 10 out of 10. It was fabulous. The whole thing was fabulous. Yes, it moved slower than other, than in other sections. The first, if you watch this, the entire first episode sets up the entire series. So it, it needs to move slower. It needs to show what Picard's life was, is, was at the beginning of the series. And his life was slow. <laughs> it just was. So you get to experience that. And uh, it was brilliant. The writers are brilliant. Uh, we didn't talk about a lot of the minor characters, but they all were brilliant. The detail that the that the costumers and these tech people and the set designers did. I, I watched one of the behind the scenes things. All of the Romulans that you see in this show had individual hairs put into their eyebrows to make the HD look real. <laughs> so, I mean, it was painstakingly made eyebrow, even for the extras in the Borg scene, in the Borg cube scene. So this thing was a labor of love for so many people and it paid off big time. So thanks you to all of you who worked on this series. You, in a time of pandemic, you made this little Trekkian's heart sing. So thank you so very, very much. It was a 10 out of 10 enterprises. That's all I gotta say. <laughs> oh, well, um, yeah, it's too bad you didn't like it at all. Uh, I hated every freaking minute of it. Yeah. Um, I, I, I really uh, i'll i'll agree with you there um yeah it was this was beautiful it was it was really well executed really beautiful and i will give it a 10 out of 10 uh xbs x borgs um i'm really grateful for the super amazing uh uh, work on the science fiction end of it and then the beautiful relationship stuff in it and so yeah uh it's it, it's sweetness is is delectable so um yeah couple couple tens today for me i i like this and i like planet of the giants and dr who but um so i i just wonder what you guys thought of picard so if any of our viewers 
want to, first of all, write fan mail uh, to Susan, our, our resident Trekkie. Please, please address your, your fan mail to Geeks Assembled at you, YouTube.com. Um, and yeah, and, and really, uh, we, we look forward to the, the, the finish of this outbreak, this pandemic, and then we can get back to making really, really amazing science fiction shows. Um, can't wait for uh, Whoopi to come on. Oh, yeah. Uh, Good to come awesome. and stuff. That will be super cool. Mm -hmm. And, um, and watch our watch the rest of our podcast please um hit the subscribe button and the little bell that gives you notification when we put something else on the on the youtube and uh and thank you for your constant uh your constant enjoyment of geeky things and uh yeah and join us please in in podcasting our anorak our our trekkie our whovian stuff we we and, and anything else um so yeah ring that, that bell <laughs> ring that bell yeah thanks that that's beautiful susan you're such a good singer anyway yeah w w wonderful time and uh see you in a in a week Bye.